Sorry. You know, he's been hitting his phone so hard. That you guys, he died. I mean, does this help at all? I'd only be doing it yes. for you guys. It, it does. does. Okay, it does Mike, indeed. you want to help me? Yeah, you want me to take those? Well, I'll, I'll uh, take one. You take one. I'll go over here. And so we're just going to go, I think. Uh, I don't know that Hirona has anything to say necessarily or specifically wants to say, but it's more or less just pick questions. Yeah, right? no problem. So raise your hand, and Aaron's over here, and uh, just go ahead, Aaron. Uh, how did Chip address the team, and what was the instant reaction? Um, we had a team meeting this morning. He, uh, he addressed the team that he was going to Philadelphia, and you know um, we understood him because everyone has a dream to be in the NFL, and he had the opportunity right in front of him. And it was too good for him to pass up. So you know, we really respect him, though, for for telling guys before he told anybody else. Was it pretty surprising, given that he had announced he was going to stay just over a week ago? Um, yeah, I think uh, obviously everyone was surprised. I, I don't think it, there's no one that wasn't surprised. So, but uh, like I said, it's uh, everyone's dream to be in the NFL, and he took that opportunity. Could you, how would you characterize the reaction other than surprise? I mean, were, were, did, were, did guys have a chance to ask questions of him? I mean, did guys show any emotion, anything like that? Um, it was uh, like right before a workout. So he he got the team together right before about to go work out. And, you know, what's so great about this team, we have all these leaders. And right after he said that, he was, well, let's go. we got to go work out because we're not going to just sit there and be upset about it. Cause no one's upset about it. But uh, we just had to go do our thing and work out and worry about the, the team now. This was essentially kind of his goodbye to you guys as well. Did he kind of leave you with any kind of message or, or how to move forward and, and what to focus on as his last kind of discussion? Yeah, I mean, uh, ever since I've been here, every single day, he's always teaching us something about not just football, but about life. You know, he's he made us all into a, a better person since uh, I've been here. He made me into a better person. But he just told us the hardest, uh, like, what we got to do is the leaders on his team, you know, can't, don't let this uh, journey stop going, just keep it going. Ron Mullen said that he wasn't really going to pull the team because it's not a popularity contest in terms of who's going to be the next coach. But in terms of, you know, the players and your general consensus, would you like to see an inside hire, say Mark Alfred? Um, whoever the university hires, um, I'm going to play for that coach. Uh, it doesn't matter for me. I know for the rest of the guys, whoever they pick up that coach, obviously that guy is going to be more than qualified to take over Chip Kelly. So we're going to um, play for wherever they hire and be happy with it. Baronis, yeah. was the was mood upbeat or kind of quiet? How would you characterize the mood in that meeting? Um, it was kind of weird because we did it uh, we did it in the in the mo, and right after that we had to go work out and do seven on seven linemen had to do linemen drills. So um, I mean, I really it wasn't quiet at all. Everyone was obviously a little surprised. You know, but uh, we went straight. I was surprised that how well the team responded to it. That made, really made me feel good, really made me uh, proud about this team because no one was there crying about it. Everyone went on with their business and did the workout, and it was a great workout today. Rob Mosley? You were talking before the bowl game. I mean, you guys, obviously, with the Tampa Bay situation last yeah. year, you guys sort of adjusted the reality that this yeah. might happen. But, but then... When he says ten days ago he's, he's, he's coming back, had you had you turned your mind off to the idea that he was going to leave? Did you still still feel prepared for the eventuality? Um, Did you think he was going to be your head coach as a fifth year senior, even five or six days ago? Uh, I had a like obviously everyone like I said everyone wants to be in NFL and since it got so close last year to him, for him to go to Tampa Bay, you know um, I had a feeling that it would happen sometime. Um, it, it was. It's hard not to think about that, but the way I look at it, just um, he, like right before the Fiesta Bowl, I was getting all these questions about after the game. But all, all I could worry about is the present. And right now, we're searching for a head coach, and whoever it is, it is. But right now, um, what I got to do as a leader of this team and get the other leaders of this team to do is get the squad together and to keep this thing moving forward. You know, with the workouts and all the off-season stuff. Warm. Ronis, you're supposed to put on the good face, obviously, but where would you say this program sits right now? Where, where do you think Chip has left this program? Are you in a good spot to, to move forward, do you think? Oh, obviously. I, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we're not in a great spot. You know, Next year, we have an opportunity 
to play in another BCS game, hopefully a national championship game. And uh, I have no doubt in my mind that we have, we have no reason why we shouldn't be able to reach that game. Was Chip emotional during his address to the team? Yeah, he was emotional. You know, he's an emotional guy. You know, anytime in previous meetings, if he talks about emotional stuff, um, he gets emotional. And it just, it's just because he loves us so much, and that's all he was telling us. He really does love us. And he could tell by his emotions that, you know, he's not just saying that just to say to make us feel better. He really does love us. Did, like, his voice crack or did he have some tears or anything? He's just emotional. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's all. I love the guy. After he spoke to the team, did he just leave or did he stick around and oh, he's, hug he, guys in the video? Yeah, he's, he talk? literally hugged, I think, all 110 guys. And, so, like, he knew every single person personally by name, even the guys that – I don't even know. So, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I know a lot of other guys. But he, he knew guys. I was really surprised that he knew and uh, literally had something to say to everybody, which was really nice. Were there any assistant coaches present? Um, no, it was just a, a strength and condition coaches and the, the GAs, graduate assistants. Well, I mean, I, you said he had something to say to everybody. I don't know if he said something specifically to you. Yeah, he said just – he. Just be the leader that I am. Uh, to keep this, keep this thing going. Uh, don't let anyone get down about this. Um, so, and I, I knew that he didn't have to tell me that, but it was great to hear that from him. How, and yeah. How did someone like Marcus respond? Did he say anything to the team? Uh, Marcus, no. We we haven't had a team meeting yet or a players meeting yet. I don't think we have to because what's great about this team, we know what's going on. We know what we have to get accomplished. So nothing really needs to be said. Just go out there and do it. You said leaders. You know, took 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 uh, took the lead. So who were the other guys besides yourself that you felt like did that? Uh, on the offensive line, it was uh, I think all guys are leaders. Like Jake Fish, a great leader, Monte Greg, and then um, the quarterbacks, uh, uh, Dustin and uh, Marcus, were really going. And uh, you could say Brian. Uh, Brian was out there and getting all the guys going, and uh, it was really uh, like pleasing to see how well the workouts went today. So that was great. It was only a couple of years ago you are you were being recruited. Yeah. Do you have any concerns? I mean, how, about how this might affect the recruiting class? The you guys have got a lot of guys coming back, so yeah. I don't know that, that uh, you know you need to worry about their impact next year. But in terms of long-term stability, do you worry about just how this is going to affect the, the program two, three, four years down the line? In that well, the recruits that are thinking about coming here, or committed here. They got it. They they got to know that Oregon. We're not going to go anywhere. We're going to be at the top of the college football. Um, so hopefully they could understand that and know that whatever coach we get, we're going to keep this thing going and stay at the top of this um, pro, uh, the, the whole nation. Uh, that being said, how much do you feel like the success here was due to Chip? Um, obviously, Coach Kelly had a big part of that, but I think an even bigger uh, bigger part was also the whole. Thinking, uh, having the whole coaching staff stay here all four years, strength and conditioning staff, academic staff, um, treatment room, all those trainers in there. Everybody's it's been the same faces around here every single day, you know. So that's that's awesome being able to see everybody every single day, the same faces, and um, that's, so I think the, not, Coach Shelley had a big part, but the whole coaching staff as well. That being said, does does that make you even want more continuity with the next guy? You know, as, you as having a. a coach from our staff right now yeah if you said that the whole staff was a big reason why you guys had so much success wouldn't it make sense to try and have that kind of keep going well that's that's all up to that uh Rob Mullins you know so whoever he picks he picks um hopefully we can keep some guys here if not we got to go with it um I'm sure whatever coaches get brought brought here they're gonna be totally qualified to be able to coach this team and uh, keep us going how important is it to maintain the same style of offense as opposed to a new coach coming in and all of a sudden you guys are huddling? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's when we go out there, you're just playing football. If we have to huddle, uh, I doubt we're going to have to huddle here. I think our offensive line, we're, we're too fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, though. I mean, you guys – don't want to change the offense, right? You want to maintain what you've been doing, which, which is what makes you guys special, Yeah, which all points to help. Yeah, that will be nice, but uh, um, as, like I said earlier, it's all about the leaders. Uh, the coaches do a lot, but, you know, in the offseason right now, it's all the leaders of the position groups, <coughs> excuse me, getting the guys going. So um, it comes down to the, the, the leaders on this team and the coaching staff. But you would want to maintain the offense you have right now? 
Oh, uh, of course. Uh, yeah, the offense would be awesome, man. Uh, in general terms, just as a player, what's your opinion on if a coach leaves, how much does that affect a person who, like, do you think that maybe they should be able to transfer without penalty? Just kind of more in general terms. You know, if you were a younger guy and you just got here, maybe you were here just for Kelly. Do you think a guy like that, after Kelly leaves, should be able to transfer without penalty? Or what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I think that would be kind of... Um, I don't think that would be a smart move to do if you just transfer because Coach Kelly left because this program isn't going to go anywhere. We're going to still be at the top of college football. And I, I have no doubt in my mind that that's going to happen. And whoever gets hired as a new head coach here is going to keep this thing rolling. So. Based on how the team reacted, do you have any concerns about it? Not at all. I was really happy the way just we fun. reacted. Um, even around school, no one's moping around, being upset. Uh, it's part of the business part of the game you know we're lucky to have the same coaching staff the past four years no college football program in the country could say that um, I have plenty of friends around the Pac-12 and uh, the Big Ten that get a new coach all the time they've had three head coaches four position coaches and I'm lucky to say that I've had the same head coach same position coach since I've been in college Ronas uh, forgive me if you if you touched on this but when Chip came into the room into the Mo this morning, did you have an idea what he was there to talk to you about, and how did he begin the conversation? Did he just get right to it, or was there something? Yeah, he he got right to it. I honestly, um, uh, like we're we're doing our warm up, and he just brought us in together in a huddle and told us he went r r straight to it, and it really uh, it was really nice for him to be able to just tell us before he told anyone else. You know, it meant a lot. Does he usually drop by this workout? Uh, yeah, he does, but, um, you know, that's why, I mean, he just brought us together, and Rob Mullins was there, too, and just to let us know, so that was, that was nice. So it's not like he walked in, you're like, oh, something. No, he's, yeah, he's, a, he's always around. That's what's nice, having a coach like Coach Kelly. You know, even at practice, uh, he's in, he runs the whole practice. You know, I hear of other teams that coaches, the head coach just rides around the golf cart and talks to alumni, and but Coach Kelly, he, he was there every single day, so that was awesome. Coach had always talked about teachable moments. What was one of those things that uh, you will take away? What's that one teachable moment? And I guess when he's not going to be on the practice field anymore, or not on the sidelines, it's the one thing that you are going to miss about your former. Um, I'm a, <laughs> I'm gonna miss him just uh, motivating us. You know, he, anytime he's talking, you know, he, he gets you going right before practice or before a game. So you know, he's a great motivator. He's uh, a great coach and a great uh, life coach as well. And hearing um, him and talk before practice or before a game or even during practice, how he, he would grab me and Marcus aside and talk about the what we did wrong, what we did right. You know, I'm really going to miss that. I'm really going to miss him and really thank him. You know, uh, he took a risk on me. I was a 240 pound center coming in and I really didn't have that many offers. And uh, he gave me an opportunity to be able to play here him and Coach Greywood, and I was uh, really thankful for that. He loved to say that he was not one to make a lot of speeches. <laughs> but I always thought that was kind of BS. You, get, you can pull the curtain back. Yeah, I mean, no he, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't. I mean, he, he, like, even at halftime, if it's a tie game or if it's a close game at halftime, he doesn't, he doesn't need to say anything to us. Like, that's what, like, we love about it. Like, he doesn't have to yell at us and get us pumped up. He just... He goes, tie your shoes up and let's get out there. That's what gets me going, to be honest with you, that he doesn't have to need to say anything. And um, even... Friday um, night, same deal on Friday nights? Oh, yeah. He's always... I mean, anything he says motivates us because it shows when you have that type of success, you know, it's almost... he's uh, When recruits come here, he's um, showing them that if you if you come here, you're going to win a lot of games, you're going to win a BCS game. And, you know, it's really easy to be able to play for a coach like that. Good stuff. Thanks, Thank you guys. Thanks, Thank you. 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 Thank